Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a tornado scene in Adobe After Effects. Um, you won't need any plugins for this tutorial. I'm going to be using a background of a nature image that I have as well as um, a clouds image that I have. So if you have any sort of nature image, you can use that. And just any picture that you have of some clouds would work for this tutorial. So I'm going to start by creating a new composition. I'm going to be using just the standard HDTV 1080, 29.97 frames per second. And I'm just going to name this Tornado. And I'm going to make this a 20 second duration. So just click OK. So first I'm going to drag in my two image files into the project panel. So right now we just have the images in the project panel. And I'm going to start with the nature background image and I'm going to drag that into our timeline panel. And I'm just going to name this, rename this to nature background. So as you can see, the image picture is much larger than the composition setting. So what I'm going to do using my select tool, I'm just going to select this and scale this down to fit the composition. Next, I'm just going to use a quick color correction to darken the image. So I'm going to drag in curves to the nature background. And I'm just going to bring the RGB down to darken the image a little bit. And then also the red channel. And I'll bring down the green channel a little bit. So now we can start creating our tornado. So what we're going to do is go to Layer, New, Solid, and I'm just going to name this Tornado. And all the settings can remain the same. And then go under Effects and Presets, and you're going to type in CC Particle World. And now what we're going to do is change some of the settings on the Particle World. So under Birth Rate, we are going to change this to 3. And what the birth rate is, it controls the number of particles generated per second. So next we're going to go to longevity and we're going to bring that up to 7. And this determines how long the particles are visible. Producer we're actually going to come back to because we're going to be creating a keyframe to animate our tornado. So next we're going to skip over producer for now and we're going to go to physics. And under animation, we're going to switch this to twirly. Velocity, we are going to switch to negative 0.09. And now the velocity controls the speed of the particles. So the higher the number, the faster the particles are going to move. Inherit velocity, we are going to change to 20%. And the inherent velocity percentage determines how much of the velocity is passed along to the particles when the producer position is animated. So a negative value causes the particles to move in the opposite direction. Gravity, we're going to switch to point, negative 0.12. And this is just going to determine how fast the particles fall. So the higher the value, the faster the particles fall. So a negative value would cause the particles to rise. Resistance, I'm going to change to 0.5. And this just simulates particles interacting with, the, with air and water, slowing over time. So next is um, extra. We're going to bring this down to zero. Extra is um, just introduces randomness into the movement of the particles. And extra angle, I'm going to change this to 180. All right, so that's it for now for the physics portion. And I'm just going to move up my time ruler so you can kind of see what's going on with the particles at this point. So next, we're going to go under particle. 
And before we start on this section, I'm going to go back to the project panel and I'm going to drag in the clouds image that we imported previously. And I'm going to also scale this cloud image down. Next, I, with the cloud image layer selected, I'm going to control right click and select pre-compose. And we're going to select move all attributes into new composition. And I'm just, it, it can be named clouds and click OK. Now we can go, now I'm going to hide the cloud layer. And now we're going to go back to the tornado layer and go back to effects controls under the tornado layer. So under particle type, we're going to be using the textured faded disk. And then you're going to go under texture and we are going to select that clouds pre-comp that we just created. And now under here, under color, I'm just going to change the color. gray so now under birth size I'm going to change this to 0 0.60 and death size I'm going to change to 3.0 now the birth and death, si death size determines the size of the particles when they are created and when they expire Max opacity, I'm going to bring down to 45%. And I'm going to change the size variation to 8%. So now we're ready to animate our tornado. So we want to make sure the time ruler is at the beginning of the time graph area. And we're going to be animating position Y. So I'm going to select the stopwatch on position Y, and then I'm going to move the tornado all the way up out of the composition. And then I'm going to move my time ruler forward to about four seconds. And then I'm going to move the tornado all the way down to about right here. So once we move the tornado down, that creates a new keyframe, key and so that's going to animate our tornado. So now we're going to create an expression to give it more of a wiggle effect. So we're going to go under our tornado layer and go under CC Particle World, and we're going to be Alt selecting the stopwatch for position X, and that's going to pop up this little area in the graph editor area. And what we're going to do is hit Enter and type in wiggle, and we're going to be selecting 0.5 comma 0.2 and this is just going to kind of give it a nice little wiggle tornado effect next I'm just going to reposition my tornado I'm just going to scale it down a little bit and put it more into the back of the scene we're also going to be doing a mask which I'm going to show you a little bit later that's going to um, help with the 3D effect now I'm going to change the volume shade to 75%, which is going to give the tornado a little more depth. So next we're going to make everything 3D to add a little more depth to our scene. So first we are going to go to our toggle switches and modes, and we're going to select the 3D icon for the tornado layer and the nature background layer. So I'm just going to select this. Next, we're going to create a camera. So we're going to go to Layer, New, Camera. And I'm just going to use a 35 millimeter camera. And then we are going to create a light. So go to Layer, New, Light. I'm just going to use a point light. The color, I'm going to use white. Intensity, I'm going to keep it 100%. And I'm going to keep the Cast Shadows box selected and click OK. 
Now I'm just going to move this light over to the top left. And as you can already see, this just created a lot more depth to our scene. Now I'm just going to go back to my tornado layer and go under CC Particle World and I'm going to go back to the wiggle and I'm just going to reduce this a little bit to 0.3.2. So now we're going to add some stormy clouds using fractal noise. So what we're going to do is create a new layer. So just go to layer new, solid, all the settings are going to be the same and I'm going to name this fractal noise. And I'm going to move my fractal noise layer below the camera layer. And we're just going to go under effects and presets, search fractal noise and drag that into the fractal noise layer. And I'm just going to make a few changes to the settings. I'm just going to bring up the complexity. Fractal type, I'm going to change to dynamic progressive. And then contrast, I'll bring down a little bit. And then when you go under transform, I'm just going to scale this up. Now I'm going to go to the ellipse tool and I'm just going to select out a portion of the fractal noise and I'm just going to move this to the top and we're just going to be creating kind of some stormy clouds so I'm just going to rotate this and make a few adjustments. So I'm just switching back and forth using the select tool and the rotate tool to make some adjustments to this clouds layer because I want it to fit towards the top of the composition. And again, you can play around with the settings to kind of get the look that you want. So what we're going to do is feather this out a little bit so it blends with the background. So just go to mask feather and I'm just going to bring this up to 44. Next we're going to be animating our fractal noise clouds. So we want to move our time ruler to the beginning of the timeline panel. And what we're going to be doing is just rotating the evolution of the clouds. So go ahead and click the stopwatch under evolution and we're going to drag the time ruler all the way to the end of the footage and now we're just going to rotate this a few times. And now I'm just going to drag in that same clouds image that we used previously and I'm just going to scale this down and I'm going to move the cloud layer in between the fractal noise and my cloud and my nature background layer. Next I'm going to go to my toggle switches and modes and then I'm going to go to mode and switch it to overlay. So as you can see it kind of gives it a cool effect. But what I want to do is only have it on the top part of the comp. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool again, and I'm just going to select out a portion of the clouds. And I'm just going to move, position this to where I want it on the top portion above the mountains. And I'm also going to feather this out a little bit so that it blends more with the background. Next, I'm going to add a curves adjustment to my clouds layer. So I'm just going to bring the RGB down a little bit and adjust some of the other channels just to get the color effect that I want. So now I'm going to go back to my tornado layer and I'm just going to add a quick vector blur effect to the tornado layer. So under effects and presets, I'm just going to search blur. And then I'm going to go to CC vector blur and I'm going to drag that into my tornado layer. Next, I'm just going to bring the amount up to three. So now I actually want to brighten up my tornado. So what I'm going to do is go back to the pre comp that we created and I'm going to double click to open that pre-comp up and I'm going to drag in the curves color correction into the clouds layer. And I'm just going to bring the RGB way up because I want to brighten up the cloud. I want more of a white tornado than a gray. So I feel like this gives it more of a realistic look to the tornado. And 
And you can also play around with the velocity. If you want like a wider tornado, um, you can bring up the velocity a little bit. So I'm just going to set my velocity at 0.15. So I think it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm just going to add one more curves correction to the fractal noise clouds and just bring up the RGB a little bit on that. So this tornado animation is almost complete, but as you can see, the tornado is in front of the tree, but I actually want it to appear behind the tree. So what we're going to have to do is create a mask. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the nature background layer, which you can do by control right duplicate or just simply command D. And with the duplicated nature background layer, I'm going to mask it out using the pen tool. So I'm going to select the pen tool and I just want to mask out the bottom portion of this footage. So I'm going to start masking this out. So I'm going to mask out anything that I want the tornado to appear behind. So depending on what um, image you're working with, your mask may vary from what I'm doing right here. So I'm just going to continue masking this out. So now I've masked this out, and now what I'm going to do is move that in front of the tornado layer. And I'm also going to feather this out a little bit, so I'm going to go under mask 1 and bring up the feather to about 58. Transform, I'm going to bring down the opacity to about 67%. Now I might bring the opacity back up depending on what how the tornado looks behind the tree. So let's just check that out right now. And now as you can see, the tornado appears behind the tree, but I'm, I think I'm just going to bring the opacity up a little bit more. So I'm just going to keep the opacity at 83%. So now our tornado scene is ready to export. I'm just going to go um, File, Export. I'm going to use the Adobe Media Encoder to export this footage. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.